Hello, and welcome back to what's bubbling a Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We've just launched a new version. Woohoo! Oh, right. Yeah, we've launched a new version. We should put that under the news, I bet. Yeah, so Zim version Zim00 is in the news, but we'll, we'll bump that up to Zim01. So, um, where can we find out about that? First of all, of course, if you go to the docs and look up updates, that's where we have all of the updates. So um, there they are, you can scroll through. So we've updated the updates actually to Zim01, Zim00, and then NFT01, 00, and then we've gone to just cat 10 neo octhep. Before we had versions of cat, but then they started, it, it didn't fit here. So we'll probably, as soon as we run out of room, as we go more Zim 0, 1, 0, 2, et cetera, uh, we'll bump NFTs to just NF, a single NFT, and then these will drop off the ends eventually. All right, so here's where we've got our updates. And once again, that's zimjs.com slash updates.html, or you can go to the docs and see the updates right there. We maybe should make that more apparent to find because those updates are starting to get fairly, um, uh, you know, well formatted. Uh, have a look. They, they, they've got bits of code there. Uh, here's some, some more updates. And the update we're going to talk about right now is, well, let's do them in order. So another way to find them is if you click on the banner, then you get this nice puzzle to play with. I think you recall that. That was updated in, uh, in Zim version Zim00. But look down here. It now says Zim01. And when we go there, badoop, this is the first example in Zim01. And we, that would go to the second example and the third example, and the fourth example, and then we're into Zim zero zeros. So as you can imagine, uh, we're gonna keep on adding examples. It's a little bit difficult to go through those examples and find everything. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you ever saw this, but this is a comparison to other frameworks. So uh, we've stuck it kind of right on the end of there. We did introduce that as Zim00. But these are various versions of Zim. And indeed, uh, that is the case. Although uh, we, a lot of these comparisons were older versions of Zim and probably would be even less uh, code in Zim. But at the, at the same point, there are also older versions of P5, older versions of Flutter. and um, So maybe they've updated too. Who knows? But anyway, we just left them. And uh, Zim is coming in at 37%, so that's wonderful. And then this will wrap. So if I click one more, it will wrap. What I was going to say is these are hard to find, possibly. You know, you got to page through them. So we're most likely going to set this up as a main menu. And we'll do here. I'll just pop out for a second. Um, like what we do in the, the other one. Well, I shouldn't have gone to news. Um, by the way, if that ever happens to you, that was in, sort of an interruption. One out of a hundred times you go to a Zim page, you're going to get the puzzle will pop up and you can just close it to get onto that page. It's sort of like a little insert there, a little insert ad, making sure that you see that puzzle. Um, I'll go instead of the news. News is one way to, to find it. You see these tiles right here. There's uh, tiles as well that were made for Zim NFT01 and for Zim Cat and Zim10. Um, another way to find those tiles, and I'll show you what I mean when we get there, is if you go under examples, they're under collections here. So under collections, these are various collections of Zim things, including a collection of the Zim features, including a collection of the Zim NFT features. So if I press that, oh, it's got the same kind of deal where you go through the triangles. Okay, so that's not gonna it's not gonna help. Oh, and that went back to the docs. Yeah, examples, collections. Um, cat has one. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Instead of making you go through the examples one after another with arrows, there would be a tiling of the examples like this, so that you can get to them immediately. So we're about to do that. F11. Oh, it opened up a pop-up, yeah. Um, where was the collections? Was NFTs. The other one was here in Zim 10. We did that for Zim 10 as well. So 
So here the Zim 10 set of tiles. And probably what we should do now that I realize it, if we haven't done these for the, uh, the cat examples, there's a little bit here under cat and a little bit here under NFTs, but maybe, oh, we did, yeah, we did them for the cat. We haven't done them for the NFT. We should probably do that situation for the NFT so that we don't have to keep going through those arrows as well. All right, so that's the plan. But anyway, let's get back on track and actually see what uh, we're going to talk about for this bubbling. <laughs> you still with me? You waiting? And that is that the Zim button has down states. Aha, wonderful. So there's the rollover state. We've had that for a long time. We found in general, or I just clicked on that and it popped up in general. I wasn't using the down state all that much then, but that was me. Um, HTML doesn't really have a down state. You just, well, it does, I guess, but not on a button. You know, you press the button and it doesn't really do anything when it's being pressed. It does it when it rolls over. So I think we got, we got away with it for seven or eight years with only one or two people ever asking for a down state. Flash had a down state. So it had a, uh, a normal state, hover state, a down state. I know HTML certainly, you know, got CSS has that, but like I said, we didn't really implement it all that much and nobody seemed to miss it. So it was kind of went out of favor, you know, back in the, back in the early days of CD-ROMs when we're all excited about a computer and, oh, look at this button and I can make this button look exactly like real life buttons and <laughs> that kind of stuff is sort of like, uh, was maybe more important. But anyway, maybe I'm wrong, who knows? Here's the down state, you ready? Down, yay. So there's a down state. And the reason why perhaps we didn't implement that is that, uh, and, and we sort of redid the whole button. So this is what's bubbling. We've redone all of the parameters of the button to organize them. And I'll take you to those in just a moment. But that's one of the reasons is by adding the down state, we just added something like, I don't know, 12 parameters or something just to handle the down states of all of our different button modes, etc. So 12 extra parameters thrown into buttons. Buttons now up to, I can't remember, it might even be up to 80 parameters or something like that. Um, luckily, we've got Zim Duo to handle those, and I'll, I'll go in and show you what those parameters look like in just a sec. Uh, but there's a couple other things. Um, another thing is default color. So the default color and roll color have no, are now changed to purple and pink. So that's default color and roll color right there. And that's the default corner on that as well. So in the past, the default button was orange, going to light orange with a corner of 20. Now it's purple going to pink with a corner of 10. All right, so tightened up the corner a little bit by default. You can always go back to those other ones. And there is an auto sizing as well. That's another thing about our Zim buttons that are a little bit different perhaps than maybe what you what you want, I don't know, is we never auto sized to the text. We find that that isn't usually how buttons are made. Buttons are usually should have, I think, a width and a height. Um, and, and then you make the text fit somehow <laughs> uh, by making less text or, or whatever, because a button is it's not often, well, I mean, sometimes it's on its own, but often buttons are with other buttons and you want them to be consistent in size so that it doesn't look like a hodgepodge of things. But on, on occasion, you've got a button all by itself and it may have been easier for you. Or the other thing is we had scale. So it was very easy to make a button a certain width and height and then scale the button to be the size that you want. And so that's how we handled size all the time. And it worked out just fine. But here is a width and a height and what you can do is just put auto, auto like that into the width. And what's happening here is the button then is expanding in size to match your um, your label size. So I think that's a good win-win. Uh, we didn't really change the button per se. We just added auto and same with height, uh, auto and height if, if so, so desired. All right, that's all I really wanna say about the button. And if you view the source here, open the page source then you can see us talking about that. Oh, no color syntaxing, boo. But there's our button. We've got a backing, a roll backing, and a down backing. So that's how it works. We've got an icon, a roll icon, and a down icon. Uh, note that we're using backings and icons for that particular button. You don't have to 
uh, it could have been just background color, or it would be background color, roll background color, and down background color. And then for the the color of the uh, the text, that would be um, color, background color, and down color. Got it? So uh, that's there. Here's us using the auto right there, it, where the width would be. We just say auto. We don't care about the height, so we're saying null. And then it's automatically sizing to, to be that size. And note, there's nothing to do with colors there, and yet the button was purple. All right. So a bit more about that button. We'll pop over into the docs. Docs and type in button. Yeah. Mm. Actually, you know what might be, well, it's probably written in here. Yeah, it is. I was going to say we could go to the updates where I know that I've just recently sort of described all of the changes, but um, we brought them into the, the docs part as well here. So generally, there are three modes for a button. The normal mode, a toggle mode, and a weight mode. These are not the down states. So um, these are different types of buttons in a sense. Normal button is just a normal button. It has all these down states and stuff like that, but it's normal. Then there's a toggled state. So if you toggle the button, it's a whole or not a state, a, a toggled mode. Uh, if you toggle it, then um, it's basically a whole other button, but it just toggles with the original button, the normal button. You can toggle between those two. The weight state, or mode, <laughs> sorry, state and mode very similar, but they're using modes for this and states for the down states. <laughs> so anyway, the weight mode is when um, the button is waiting. Again, it could be a completely different button, but once it's done waiting, it'll go back to the normal button. So you see what I mean by the modes there. So you've got three different modes. Then each of those have background color, color. The background color is the background color of the button. The color is the text color. Then there's a backing. That could be an image or whatever, um, a pattern, an image, a bitmap. Uh, and then an icon. Okay, so the backing and the icon as well. So we've got four different things that can be shown on that button. And then each of those have normal states, which is called an up state, up state a roll state and a down state. So there you go. And down states are added in Zim01. There's an example of that. So this is what it would look like for um, just the normal mode. A background color, roll background, uh, roll background color, down background color, color, roll color, down color, backing, roll backing, down backing, icon, roll icon, down icon. In the past, the button, the backings and the icons were later on in the buttons after things like a line and corners and shadows and all that. Well, it seemed to make more sense to bring all of those things together. So now you've got a set for normal. You've got a set exactly like this for um, toggle, except it will say background toggle color, roll background toggle color, roll background, uh, oh, down back, down toggle background color, <laughs> uh, toggle color, roll toggle color, down toggle color, okay? And same with weight. So you've got exactly the same uh, set again for each of those modes. The normal mode, the only thing different is the normal mode also has the border and we don't, we don't provide different borders for the um, other modes. So we don't have a different border for the toggle mode, a different border for the weight mode. If you want to do that, just make a completely different button. <laughs> you know, whatever. All right. Uh, and remember, that normally, we a lot of frameworks would look at this and go, okay, let's put all those in an object called the normal object. And all this would be grouped in normal object. That would reduce the number of parameters on the main object. Well, we don't need to do that, really, because we've got the Zim Duo technique. So... We, we do all the parameters in order like this, but it, it would be very likely that you would be using the object literals for these, and then there's no point. And, and style, another thing is style. We can style each of these. If we put the set of them inside of an object, then we can't style them in the same way. I mean, we maybe could have applied a different way to style, but there's no, no real need to. So that's why we keep all of these flat 
and then we can use the, uh, the Zim Duo technique of the object literal configuration object anytime we want. Okay. So I think that has taken you through the buttons. And there's something else I was going to say. Oh, right. So we've um, changed the order of the of these where we've got the width and height and label as before. And most of this stuff looks the same, except now we've got a, a, a down background color inserted. We've got color, roll color, down color, border color, border width, roll border color, uh, roll border color, down border color. Okay, so that's that's inserted the border stuff there. Which and then we go to backing, roll backing. So the backings have been moved up to to be all within this one mode here. So basically, this is the first mode. Since we don't always use the toggle mode and the weight mode, we've then moved to corner dashed shadow color. So these are all the ones outside of toggle. Okay. Including some new ones here for uh, padding. So we brought in auto padding. If you, if, you, if you set it to auto labels, then we've got padding. We didn't want to confuse people because there is no padding on the buttons. Uh, the way you handle padding on the buttons is change the size and change the, the label size, basically, and that, that will give you padding if you really need to. <clears throat> but now that we've got the auto, it becomes important to provide a padding on that. So we uh, added auto padding and auto padding H, padding V in there. So these things right here are the general parameters, aside from width, height, and label. So this set right here is all of your, your um, first mode. Here are your normal parameters. Watch what happens. Watch closely. So now afterwards, there are all your toggle parameters. Going to there. So toggle, toggle background color, roll toggle background color, down toggle background color, toggle color, roll toggle color, down toggle color, toggle backing, roll toggle backing, down toggle backing toggle icon, roll toggle icon, down toggle icon, and a toggle event uh, that gets tacked on at the end. And then here are all your weight parameters right here. Weight uh, and a weight time That's what it starts off with. A weight background color, roll weight background color, down ba weight background color, weight, etc. So you, you see how we've made that. All these things are the same kind of order. There's a few border stuff inserted there. Uh, your toggles are the same order, your weights are the same order, the weights have a couple different things tacked on in the end, the toggle has one thing tacked on in the end. Okay, and then we drop out to, those are the three common parameters right at the end of all of our display objects that accept style for group and inherit. Woohoo! And that has been a Zim bubbling. Uh, I am Dr. Abstract. I'm actually that guy right over there on the right-hand side waving. That's me in Altspace VR. We've got a party in Altspace VR coming up in about an hour or two at the Pagoda Scope. Oh, looking forward to it with a big tower that we're climbing. Um, we average about 100 people at a party, not all at once, but over the the two or three hours that we have it there. Been up to 150 people even. They come from all over the world, Europe and South America, Americas. All right, Asia. A little a bit harder for Asia, sorry, because it's four o'clock in the afternoon here in Canada, and that's mainly to cater to Europeans so that they have it during party time, and then it would be <laughs> four in the morning for you guys in Asia. <laughs> but if you're if you really party late, uh, you can come, come and visit us. It's hard as well for the west coast of uh, the states where they have to party at 12 noon. <laughs> such such is the world. But in VR, we're uh, we love it there. So um, it, it's fun. Half the talk is about time zones. <laughs> well, maybe not to the point where somebody had even made a, a song about it, the, the time zone song. All right, we'll see you guys uh, later. Come and visit us at zimjs.com/discord, zimjs.com/slack. And you can discuss any of these changes that we've been making. Ask any questions about Zim. We'd love to see you there. Have a great day or night. Bye.